So, uh, just to fill you in on what's been happening there. First of all, apologies for those listening online, which looks like it's probably just uh, tonight's uh, special guest, Scream and Mandy. Uh, and <laughs> that's absolutely fine. Um, now, I'm back online. Internet uh, did go down. It happens now and again. That is live internet broadcasting for you. It is going to happen. Particularly, it seems, in these times where there's a lot of demand for internet, so that's okay. Uh, so I don't even bother mentioning it now or interrupting the show, because if you're listening to the recording, you don't want to be going, hearing me blabbering on about that. But more importantly, let's talk about tonight's very special guest. I should have got him on the phone, actually. Uh, Graham and Mandy. And uh, just to fill you in what's been happening, that's two songs back to back. First of all, ZZ Top and I Need You Tonight. Uh, that was requested uh, by Graham for Mandy. And uh, apparently, Mandy then said, that's the, the the song that I introduced him to. That's what Mandy says. So, that's lovely. But I thought, nice little hint from Graham there. I need you tonight. Get the bath running, darling. Get the candles out. Yep, yep. Very romantic. He was just telling me the other day about uh, lounging around in your gownies and stuff like that. So, not surprised. And then we had Heartbreak Warfare, which Mandy requested because... Well, first she said it was um, the to remind you of the time we met, but she did clarify that as the that was your first gig together. So lovely and very romantic, I have to say. Uh, Mandy and Graham, for those listening in, uh, Man uh, Graham's my best bud, and Mandy is partner. She's also one of my best bud. She's a good, she's a good lass. She's a good lass. We keep telling her that. Anyway. Guys, thanks for listening. You are loved very much, and uh, I'm glad you're around. This is great, actually, for those listening in, because I, years ago, before the radio stuff, before hospital radio and stuff like that, many, many, many years, going back in the midst of time, it's becoming quite a personal show tonight, uh, back in the midst of time, uh, when Graham and I were in our early days of mucking around together, um, we used to have, or Graham used to have, parties. These parties were legendary around the uh, musical theatre crew and some other friends. And we used to have these parties uh, and then Graham would have them at his various luxury pads that he's owned over the years and fantastic places. And I would rock in maybe a week or two before that. I would grab music, record, all vinyl mostly uh, and stuff and some CDs and stuff and I would make tapes, cassette tapes up of a kind of playlist of music. And then on the night, later on, have a drink or two, and I'd sit down and I'd just fire in songs. And it was so analog back in the day. It was great fun, brilliant, um, but it was very analog. So between his burgeoning record collection at that time and my some of my stuff, which is wasn't then what it is now, um, we I cobbled together it, and we cobbled that together music-wise. And now I think, imagine if I had this much technology and power back in the day. Oh my goodness me. Okay, this one is The Who, and who are you?
That is The Who and Who Are You? Here on Mark's Lockdown Live Rock Volume 2. Yeah. Okay. I was trying to be all cool there. Didn't really work. Didn't really pull it off. Didn't have the sufficient cool chips for tonight. But never mind. Never mind. You're with Mark. I'm playing that music for you. Rock Volume 2. It's only serious rock stuff tonight. It's good rock music. It's a mix of all kinds of great rock music tonight. Uh, that is a brilliant tro- song. I have a huge fascination with music. Uh, you probably guessed. I've also got a rather wide, I think, and varied taste in music, which has been handy over the years. I listen to just about anything. Uh, and it's, it's, it's increasing again with age, weirdly. Um, starting to listen to all sorts of things. All these influences now. Um, so anyway, the Who uh, themselves. There's listening to that song. It's a classic, isn't it? It's brilliant. And and also apologies at this time of night, but it's after the watershed. So there's a wee F word came in. That's okay as far as I'm concerned. Keith Moon. Now I every time I listen to that song, it is a cracking gr- drum track. I mean, all the stuff that he drummed on was just amazing. I love the Who. Full stop. An amazing band. Still are. Still are. Um, Roger and Pete. Um, fantastic. But, but drum track, my goodness. What I sometimes do is go onto YouTube and look for isolated instruments and listen to the actual, because you don't hear all the details sometimes in the full mix that's released on the albums and that we all know and love, like that one. If you listen to the drum track for that song, without the rest of the band, you can just hear leakage from Keith's headphones that were taped to his head, which is amazing to stop them falling off. It's incredible, because for a man that was probably, with the deepest of respect, not in the best condition fitness-wise at that time when that was, it was recorded, and I think uh, it was 1979, um, it is amazing. And he's shouting and screaming, he's doing... He's going... And you hear him roaring and stuff like that, but it's some drum track, my God. Anyway, I digress. Great rock music's what it's all about. Uh, due to the technical hitch, Facebook have rejoined us. I can't reconnect, you see, when I actually started. So when Facebook drops out, I can't reconnect. But because of that dropout, it's reconnected. So if you're listening to us on Facebook, you're welcome. And this is Paul Weller, The Changing Man. <laughs>
Mm. Yeah, Paul Weller. The one and only uh, Paul Weller with Changing Man. Absolutely outstanding. I love it. Great. Another great song. They just keep coming. Um, thanks for listening, everyone. It's been a great night so far. 26 minutes past nine on... Uh, what night we're on? Tuesday. Tuesday the 28th of April. 2020. Another fine day in lockdown. That's what it's all about. Uh, guys, uh, thanks for staying tuned in. Uh, I understand some of you are having tuning problems and you're not always able to hear me. Well, I don't need to worry about that um, because what we'll do is I suggest you go and listen again. That would be a great idea. Remember, the whole show's on there and you can hear all the things I've been saying about you when you have been off air. See? It's easy. Dead easy. It's a really easy way to go. Uh, okay, okay. This is uh, The Cranberries and Zombie. I was going to say it definitely is. <laughs>
We, we, we call in this one the isolation mix. Yeah. Okay. Queen. Sheer heart attack. Now that one uh, actually is a request. How how lovely of them. It was a request dedicated to me from Graham and Mandy, my buddies. Thanks, guys. I was actually going to play another track from the album, but I think I'll save it. Uh, interesting one. Yeah. Queen. Sheer heart attack. So um, that one, um, Pot Pickers, was written by Roger Taylor. Written in 1974 for the album called Sheer Heart Attack, but not recorded, or certainly if it was recorded, it wasn't finished, uh, and it was left off, and then was recorded and put onto the album News of the World in 1977. Doesn't sound like Queen, does it? Does it? I mean, it's quite weird. It's, it's very of its era, 1977, and there's all these stories about how the, the Sex Pistols were recording in um, the same studios, which were Wessex Studios in London. And um, there's the famous story about um, Sid Vicious um, coming to the studio or something like that, or bumping into Fred, and Fred was calling him, oh, Mr. Ferocious, darling, and all that stuff, and really annoying him. But it's quite odd how that song is possibly the most punky song Queen ever recorded. It was never my favourite, that's my favourite album, uh, News of the World, Joint with the Game, and I do like the song, 
but it's grown on me over the years. It was always my least favourite song. It was one of my least favourite songs ever by Queen at one point, but it actually has grown on me. Um, so there you go. That's the story behind that one. Thanks, guys, for dedicating that to me. Another story uh, which leads me into this song, and I'm going to tell you very quickly. Um, so, good many years ago, 1988, uh, Monsters of Rock Festival, Castle Donington, went down there. Brilliant, okay? Solemn, great bill, fantastic. Uh, so um, Guns N' Roses, early Guns N' Roses. Um, saw Kiss, who were second on the bill. The Dave Lead Off Band was Steve Vai, no less. And uh, top of the bill was Iron Maiden. Now, years and years later, there's always been this refrain in my head. Now, I know a bit about Iron Maiden, and I got quite into them at the time, but I wouldn't say I was so deeply into them that I could remember all the stuff on the albums, and I hadn't listened to stuff for a long time. So every time I had a moment in life, every time I got a bit of quiet, and we'd maybe go out the back or whatever, have a moment of peace, in my head there was this riff all the time, for years and years. And I thought, I just thought I'd picked it, I thought I'd invent I was getting to the point where I thought, have I written this? This is great. I'll have to do something with it. And I'm talking 20, 30 years, this tune going in my head. Just that riff. And then, about three or four years ago, when listening to I thought, I'm going to listen to Iron Maiden. And then we I heard it. Information. 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 Who are you? The new number two. Who is number one? You are number six. I am not a number. I am a free man. <laughs>
Oh, yeah. Love it. <sighs> Bet you loved it too, Graham. <laughs> no, in all seriousness, uh, you're listening to Mark's Lockdown Live Rock Volume 2. This is the show that brings you the choicest, meatiest slabs of choice rock music for you. Oh, yeah. This is for Graham. You did ask for some Saxon earlier, sir? This is your first gig, I understand.
Very nice. Very nice indeed. Wheels of Steel, Saxon. Uh, fond memories for Graham with his first gig there. And uh, I'll tell you what, they were... They're a good band, weren't they, Saxon? Fabulous. Uh, well done. Good choice. Good choice. Uh, good shout. Good shout on that one. Uh, it is 2149 myself now. Uh, the requests are closed. Um, yes, and I, I did pick it up in the chat box. I will use that in another show. I was I had a quick listen. I thought, not really. Not for tonight. Not for tonight. But Muse, on the other hand, this is this is uh, this is older Muse. This is a uh, classic Muse. This is hysteria.
My first gig. That was it. Marillion Assassin to almost close the show tonight. Uh, I'm going to play that. Sorry about the rubbish mix, by the way. I actually plumped for the single version, thinking, not got a lot of time, going to cram another song in. Let's just go for this one. And that's up a compilation. That's up a proper Marillion compilation. Bit rubbish, but that one, nonetheless, nonetheless. Uh, I'm going to dedicate that, uh, I know you'll listen to this show, uh, to David McElroy, who is a big fan um, of the show and listens to a lot of these comments and stuff on me. So, David, that was one for you. I know you're a Marillion fan too. Uh, brilliant. Guys, that's it. That's all I've got time for. I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the show tonight. I hope you enjoy the show when you're listening to it back. I hope you have a great night. Stay safe. Look after each other. I'll be back tomorrow with uh, Mandy's favourite musicals tomorrow. So that's tomorrow night. Uh, The musical show is tomorrow night. Uh, Do tune in for that if you're listening. I know that a lot of people here aren't the heavy rock fans. Tomorrow's for all the musical people. All the shows are for different tastes, so it's totally cool. So if you are a fan, do tune in. If you're listening to Catch Up, do tune in. I'm going to leave you with this from one of the great bands, the great cult bands out there. I don't know what happened to them because, frankly, I always thought they were brilliant. They brought out this amazing album as well. Um, What's it called? Smell the Glove. Yeah. Take care, folks. (laughs) 